Welcome to another Endwalker job comparison video, in which I want to talk about all the changes of Bard, Machinist and Dancer, who are forming the ranged physical DPS sub role. Like already mentioned in other videos, potency changes will happen in the final build for Endwalker, so making assumptions for damage output or other potency based comparisons will not stand until we get the final Endwalker data. Above that, even abilities may be changed, so take this with a grain of salt and just play whatever your heart desires. Still, when looking at utility and overall traits to help out your own or your party's battle performance, we are not getting much changes. Movement skills remain identical, as well as defensive helpers, except for reduced cooldowns on shield, samba and similar abilities. Yet the dancer's improvisation ability gets altered a tiny bit, so that weaving it into your battle rotation is nearly impossible anymore because now it grants a shield upon a second execution, which has to be done during the process of dancing. And the kinda same story can be told for overall damage output, and I get the strong feeling of the same meta placement of these jobs as they have been placed in Shadowbringers. Machinist will remain the flexible selfish DPS, while Dancer and Bard compensate missing damage by pushing the raid's DPS to the higher ground, but it seems they are just getting closer together due to the Bard's level 90 ability which instead of being a big potency hit, turns out to be a big party damage support. While the dancer can expect the exact opposite in the form of Starfall Dance that is procced by using Devilment. And that really feels like flattening the line again, granting Bard more support while giving the dancer more damage to get them on the exact same spot of being supportive damage helpers with solid personal contribution. While Machinist remains the top choice for selfish damage, at least inside of the sub role of ranged physical DPS jobs. So if you favored the dancer for being the best of the best of supporters, you may still like the aspect of being able to choose a specific party member instead of boosting your raid as a whole. Yet the general upper hand may be lost while damage is increased, so now it really depends on the form of support instead of the overall value, which I really like to see because now they are head to head while being unique and still totally different than their machinist counterpart. And even though Final Fantasy's balancing had been amazing in Shadowbringers, I always felt that there had been a slight privilege on the dirty dancing, which is definitely shaking from these changes. Nonetheless, the decision you have to make is definitely drawn out of the overall playstyle aspect and this should be the category on which you decide for or against any of these jobs. Starting with the machinist, that is going to remain totally unchanged, which I like and dislike both. First, because our man with the machine gun had been insanely enjoyable in Shadowbringers, while maybe losing complexity from its former style in Stormblood, where timing and opener preciseness did make the machinist to one of the most difficult jobs to play actually. I simply love hypercharge and the idea of causing a reduced global cooldown inside of this phase. As well as having these insanely powerful drill and air anchor attacks that felt super rewarding at least when you're not tackling each and every form of content with the gun job. On the other hand, there were still some abilities that lacked some essence and character, like our unloved family member Wildfire, which definitely had been much cooler pre-Shadowbringers and I'm a bit disappointed that they let it remain unchanged, but other than that, Machinist had been great and will be great in Antwalk as well. I mean, look at these new additions of making our Mech Queen more interactive with Crowned Collider. Or granting us a third Giga Drill Breaker attack in the form of Chainsaw, which is also an AoE attack and finally the double reassemble, freeing up some force timings to drill while also granting space to use it on AoE now. Or in two target situations in combination with Chainsaw that I was always hoping for because Machinist always felt to lose the DPS advantage over Bard on Dancer every time we had to face a second or third target, which may change now. Above that with Scatter Gun, the new AoE ability learned on level 82, while it may seem basic at the first glance, granting us 10 heat gauge is making a significant difference for frequency of auto crossbow. And I'm glad to see the machinist's overall AoE gameplay improved, as it had been among the most insignificant AoE styles yet. So if you like the machinist and can look over the fact that Wildfire still remains in soul searching state, this job will be a blast. And as someone said on my livestream, gun is better than no gun. A kinda different view can be taken on the dancer side of things, because they are changing some very important key points of its class design, like making a separation between AoE attacks and their procs versus single target. That now has to be decided and you are not just smashing in combo follow ups regardless of the number of enemies, which I personally like, but this takes away the automated AoE power of dancer and diminishes some of its cleaving power. 
On the other hand, they're reducing the RNG factor significantly, or at least adding another way to gain Esprit Gauge, in the form of Enhanced Esprit, that now can actively be generated by Flourished skills, without strictly being dependent on procs and luck. That always felt like one of my biggest no-nos for the dancer. But these two aspects heavily depend on your personal angle, if you liked or disliked these aspects, and that may lead you into liking or disliking the new Endwalker Dancer. Nonetheless, what is to be liked are the new combo finishers to technical finish, yes, finisher to a finisher, in the form of Tilana. That is a weaker version of standard finish that also grants the standard finish buff to you and your dance partner, allowing some more flexibility to grant the buff, but also holding back standard step when you're not having enough time to dance through the whole sequence, or for a simple push in damage and highlight to make the 5 dance sequence more valuable. Yet my personal highlight is Enhanced Devilment proccing Starfall Dance. Finally, Devilment feels like your cooldown phase, or at least starting into it, because I always felt, yeah it buffs, and this buff is insane, but its impact is held back by the high potency pinnacle of your step finishers. But now with Starfall Dance, this at least comes very close in potency, granting Devilment a signature ability to show how inner release looks on the dancer's side of the river. And yes, there are more things like changes to Flourish reducing some of its clutter by only activating few selected skills now, with the choice you have to make between single and multi-target abilities, while also proccing a guaranteed Fan Dance 4, whose animation looks phenomenal. So all in all, I believe that Ricardo will be totally satisfied with these changes, and I'm absolutely looking forward to his guide in Endwalker. Alright, last and definitely not least, the Bard changes. Hell. It's about time. Yes, finally it happened, and we can make use of our damage over time effect procs, and we're not forced to directly put it into our rotation. Especially because there are many moments where space to use them is very limited. And while Mr. Happy said more often than not he faced the situation to still be overcapped with procs, this will still be a great benefit to the overall flow of the bard, and especially in single target situations, Bloodletter flow is much more enjoyable with backup space for procs. But we will see how that turns out in Endwalker and with set proc rates and potency. But at least the idea of two stacks is made, and some flaws with that idea can always be adjusted, right? However, when looking at some of the other changes, dot effects now last longer, as well as your song stances, which is really cool to see and grants us much more calm and flexibility at the same time, to make more song stance choices instead of rushing through them as quickly as possible. Of course, this stands in relation with new buff alignments, but on the bard it is more significant because of snapshotting, which seems to be much more solid now. Furthermore, we get another addition and follow up combo to our Apex Arrow and Soul Gauge, that now makes it mandatory to be used under buff windows, because the new Blast Arrow is enough potency to make waiting for cooldowns worth it. On the other hand, it has a 30 seconds time window to be used, so we will see how this fits into the rotation in Antwalker. And for the finale, we get Radiant Finale, that is amplified with each stance granting more coda, so more bonus on the party damage buff. And I'm really curious how that fits into the first opener. The re-openers, sure. But I feel like you may be using this with one or two codas, only for simply fitting it into the bursty wondrous minuet. Or maybe we're starting with another stance for optimal buff alignments. I'm really excited to see those Bard experts theory craft about this Pandora's box of a job. And that is basically how you can look at the Bard. While Machinist and Dancer are streamlined more and more, the Bard, while gaining more chill on procs and snapshotting, the other aspects seem more complex but also more rewarding than ever before. So I'm hyped. Let us toss a coin to the Endwalker's Ode. But if you still cannot decide for any of these jobs, just play all of them and get your lyrical satisfaction from Alternation, which in Final Fantasy is the best way to enjoy the game and its phenomenal job design. So thank you for watching and see you on the moon playing the bow harp, or dancing to the sound of drilling chainsaw guns. Until then, stay safe, stay healthy and keep loving Final Fantasy.